Um, so I would perhaps put on to the blog the, 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 the skeleton plan that I had uh, and what we did. And also during the, the project, I had the learners, the students themselves, they had their own diaries so that they would, could record how they were feeling during this, this project. So what they were putting in the diaries um, was not what we were doing in class, but how they were feeling in class. And this is particularly important. This is something that, going back to the conference in Barcelona, was something that we needed. <laughs> we needed to know how the students were feeling in, um, uh, during this project and how this approach was affecting them. So the blog was used to, to document how they were feeling and it was also used um, to, uh, to, to say what was happening in the class, what activities we were doing and, and so on. Um, and so I did this, this, this for nine months uh, and like I said, it, it was a fantastic experience. It, at times it was very stressful um, and I felt like perhaps I'd taken on uh, too much. And, and, and this is where the project or the blog itself became something a little bit different and it went in a slightly different uh, direction. And because this was a new approach and I had never done it before, um, the blog itself became uh, almost like a vent, it became a personal space for me. Um, for reflection, um, and, and reflection is something that I'd, I'd read about um, while I was researching for the blog. Uh, I hadn't really looked into it too much, but this is this is what happened when I was when I was doing this project. Um, I, I was obviously still blogging about what was happening in the class, but it, it took a turn when I started to talk about how I felt during the classes and after the classes in particular. And um, so what would happen is, is if I had a particularly bad class, uh, you know, I, I would go home and, and, and I would really pour out how I was feeling into the blog and it, and, it, and it helped. It became like a very, it became like my own personal counseling service almost. Um, but not all of the lessons were bad, obviously. I, I'm talking about frustration and stress, but obviously when things went well, things went really well. I would almost be be running home to get back to the blog, to then to then to you know get this blog out and let people know how how well things were going, um, and 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 this was really 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 helpful for me this this reflection space and 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 this this for me is where the blog really took off, um, and and I remember there was one particular post that I that I wrote. Uh, and uh, I saw the class uh, twice a week for about an hour and a half. And the first lesson of, of this particular week, it just didn't go very well at all. I mean, it, it was, I would say it was a, a bit of a disaster. And, um, you know, I was really down about, about what, how the course was going. And, 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 um, and I was struggling a bit. But I was determined to, to go back in and... and um, and to put things right. So the next lesson, uh, I saw them. You know, I put a huge amount of effort into the class, and and it went really, really well. And, and I felt like I brought the project back around, and, and I got the um, got the students back on side. And during the class, I had this idea of it being a bit like uh, a fight, almost uh, a bit like a, a boxing match. And this idea developed. So that on my way home, I was I was almost talking to myself like I was the announcer in in, in this uh, in this boxing um, event, and and I went home and I recorded everything that had happened in in that particular class as though I was writing a commentary about a boxing match. So the the students were in one corner, and. And I was in the other corner, and we were kind of, you know, we were boxing, we were fighting against each other, and, and, and the commentary was um, was about, you know, how sometimes they would throw a punch, and and they would catch me off guard, and then I would come back out of my corner fighting. And, and I really, really enjoyed writing that post. Uh, it was really, it was just a really nice experience, and 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 that was a really nice way 
of um, of writing a blog and a writing about the class. Um, and this kind of brings me to, uh, to to my next point, which is um, is about the writing within the blog itself. I mean, I'm not particularly um, academic. Um, I don't have an academic background in that uh, I didn't go to university. Um, I, I kind of bummed through college, and uh, and I uh, because I knew I was joining the army, and I went to the army, and you know, I never really did any anything academic there. But the, when I did my CELTA course, I that was a real wake-up call for me in, in terms of using language appropriately. And uh, CELTA, yes, yes, I did my CELTA. And um, that really kind of showed me how out of my depth I was. But you know, eventually I passed the course, and, and, um, and that put a lot of emphasis on me using my own English in class and so on. But through through using and doing the blog, I could see how my my writing was improving um, because I was putting a lot of myself into it, and, and my language use was getting better, and um, and I could I could try out new things, and I was very lucky that my boss um, would look at my blog posts, and, and and if I was making mistakes, she would pull me to one side and say, "Hey, you know, what are you doing? This is wrong." and, and and then you want to try and do this and, and change this and so on. Um, so, and I think the reason that uh, my, my, my writing improved so much was because I had my own writing style. And I think that is particularly important if you are, if you're going to have a blog, is that you have your own writing style. When I was researching, I, I read a lot of blogs, and I came across, you know, quite a variety of blogs. And there, a lot of people, a lot of teachers, uh, are quite academic in their writing, and they like to quote, uh, and they like to use kind of very technical language. And this can be quite difficult at times to break down um, uh, if you're not that way inclined in terms of, of reading academic studies. And I recently. Um, attended a conference where the speaker was talking about research and she was saying that, that, that not enough teachers write or, or talk about um, research for other teachers. So she was saying that uh, you know a lot of academic studies are produced and, and this contains language is particularly difficult to break down. And as, as teachers, we're, we're busy. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter what you teach, you're always busy, you have a life, you have your job, but you don't have much time in between that. So when, when you want to read about um, something, you want to be able to read that with, with ease and be able to engage with that subject. But if it's filled with, with very um, academic language, it, it can kind of be off-putting and, and you might not be able to um, uh, get into that text but if you're reading a blog with someone who has uh, their own kind of personalized style, when they're reading it, they'll be able to say, hey, yeah, oh, I understand this. He, he's speaking from my point of view, or, or I've experienced that. And, and I think that's a particularly important um, uh, thing to do, think, something to consider when, you, when you're writing a blog, is, is your own personal style of writing and, and how this is going to affect the people who are, uh, who are reading your blog. And this was really brought home to me when I, I went to a conference. Uh, after the project had almost finished, I went to IA Tefl in Glasgow, which is a, very, this is a huge ELT conference, and I spoke about this project. And I had this, this amazing time at the conference. It was, a, it was a very emotional experience for me. I met a lot of people there. Um, uh, I made a lot of friends there, and I remember getting. Uh, I had to get the train from Glasgow to Manchester to catch my flight back to um, uh, to Spain. And I, I got onto the train, and I immediately started to write um, a blog post, and it was about my experience at the uh, at the conference itself. Um, 
and I, it, I just remember very vividly, furiously kind of typing away at the, this blog post and, and I'd had it more or less finished in about an hour and there was a lot there and um, I, once I got to the airport I managed to get a, a, an internet connection and what I normally do with my blog posts is, is I edit them, I, I read through them, um, I, I, I change a few things and so on but with this particular post um, I didn't do that. I just I just uploaded it, and I and I just needed to get what I, what I was feeling out there on and onto the blog. So I I, I got my flight back to to um, to Spain, and uh, once I got home, and, and again I managed to get a connection for um uh, for, for the internet. I noticed that I had quite a few emails, and I, I clicked onto my blog. And I'd realized in, in the time that I posted the blog, which was sometime in the afternoon to, to when I got home at night, so maybe a gap of um, five to six hours, I guess, about 200 people had already seen, uh, had seen my blog. And that kind of blew me away, and, and, I, and I wasn't quite prepared um, uh, for that. And eventually, um, you can see it here, this is a, the thing you can see on the screen now is just a, a, a a screenshot of my blog. This is a stats page. Uh, eventually, about 443 people looked at this this particular blog. And for someone like myself, this is this is huge. This is a really a huge uh, confidence boost. Um, and, and overall, after that that blog post, um, you can see here, I, I posted it in March in 2012. Um, you know, nearly 1,500 people. Um, looked at my blog and you know it's not about stats I mean this I mean this is a very cool thing to have with the blog and this is another good thing that, that WordPress does and, and it, but it's not about numbers but it, you know it's really nice to know that people are coming to your blog and they're enjoying it and um, and I think the success of, of this particular um, this blog post a lot of it was down to, 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 to the way that the way that I write uh, this personal style and I think this really brought home um, that the way that I write is the right way and, and that, that if you have a particular way of writing don't change that for anyone else you know write write from the heart if that's what you want to um, where you want to write from or or if, if writing academically is your way do it that way so that's fine um, so, so that was really good, and and I think as well, apart from my writing style and so on, I think the blog posted particularly well because during the conference, uh, and 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 before the conference, and then subsequently after the conference, um, I had been uh, effectively networking. I'd been building up. Um, a, a, what we call um, a, a PLN, um, uh, uh, these contacts um, throughout um, throughout the world. I suppose at the end of the day, and I managed to do this through through different particular um, uh, Twitter, um, which which I think is uh, well, it's 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 really changed my life. It sounds very dramatic, I know. Um, but it really has changed a lot of what I do, and it's particularly important um, for my blog. Uh, it's very important for meeting uh, other people and sharing ideas and so on. But I, I, I'm a big believer in that if you have a blog, you need to have Twitter. I think these two things are, are they go hand in hand. You can I don't think you can have a blog without having some sort of Twitter account. To, to help you uh, promote your your work, uh, uh, maybe some people will disagree with me on this point, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I really think that they're intertwined. There's a there's a big um, connection here between the two. And by having a good PLN, by 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 having Twitter, other people can help promote your blog, and they can push the blog into areas that you, you, you wouldn't think of, of putting it. And, and by doing this, more and more people come to look at the blog, more and more people comment on your blog, and 
these comments then create further dialogues and these dialogues lead to ideas, collaborations and they look of um, they um, they just lead to more ideas and, and I think that um, it's very important if you're going to have a blog you really need to have a well-established um, PLN uh, it, it offers support um, they they offer you know when you're having a bad day you can go to your PLN and, and, and they'll pick you up and um, and I just think it's super important um, if you're going to blog. Um, it, it, this this community is very important, very, very super important. Um, so obviously the, the the project is finished now, um, and the blog is still up and running. And after the project is finished, I used the blog um, for other things. So when I had a particularly good idea or a lesson, I would then use it to. Um, to put up a lesson plan and I and, and I and I'd share um, things that were happening um, in, in my class with other people and I think that that's you know one of the, the most important things about blog is, is simply sharing information um, uh, getting things out there exchanging ideas uh, and that's kind of the where the blog is um, at the moment um, so that kind of brings me to, to the end of the first part of the talk. I hope I'm not boring you all. Uh, everyone seems to still be here, so that's a good thing. Um, what I'm going to talk about now is, is a new idea that I've had, and a new project and a new blog that, um, that I've, I've started. And actually, uh, I've launched it today. It's, it's actually gone online today. Um, so what you can see on your screen now is is my new blog. Again, it's on. I've used WordPress for this particular blog, uh, and it's called um, Teaching Unplugged Week. And the the there are two two main reasons for doing this particular um, blog. The first one is uh, I want to encourage teachers um, around the world uh, to experiment in class. Uh, I want them to um, to look at what they're doing in class, and, and and I want them to change that for the better, uh, or or at least try to change that. Um, and what I want to do is, is to try and encourage as many teachers to try and teach in the unplugged um, uh, approach. And the second part of the project is to try and get the teachers to reflect upon this process itself. Um, and I want to, to hear from teachers uh, how they felt during the process, after, during, and, uh, and before the process. And I want them to try and get feedback from, from the students. Um, and eventually what I'd like them to do is to write about this and send it to the blog. And then I will upload it onto the blog so people can read about this. So, so there's kind of the two main um, the things that I'm trying to achieve here is experimentation in the classroom, encouraging this, and also giving other teachers the experience of, of, of blogging in a very small way, you know, getting a, a post published onto a blog and then, you know, getting other teachers to comment on these blogs and to create a dialogue. And, and so just giving them that experience of, of being part of a blog itself. Um, so that's it. And, and, and the reason it's called Teaching Unplugged Week is because uh, um, I, I, I've put down a date of, of, of the 5th of May of this year. And I'd like everyone to, to try to aim towards that date for when they um, they carry out this, uh, you know, to choose one class and to try to teach them in an unplugged way at least twice in that week and then to, to reflect on that experience. And I think the idea of, of having a week where teachers from around the world, uh, hopefully, uh, if it gets that far, know that when they step into the classroom, the other people around the world are doing exactly the same place, uh, exactly the same thing. And I think that, uh, that I think that's quite an interesting idea. And, and I hope that, um, that there's many people as possible um, take part in the project itself. Um, 
and while it, it, it is about teaching unplugged because I have a particular passion about this and I, and I really th think that um, this would be particularly useful for teachers uh, it really is just about experimentation if, if this particular project works well then there's no reason why we couldn't have another experiment uh, experimental week using particularly another approach it doesn't really matter um, so I'm starting off with teaching unplugged because that's what I know and and that's what I'm passionate about but um, it really is about experimentation and, and teachers thinking about new ways to to teach because I think that very often teachers um, in particular in, in, in ELT and this, I don't want this to be an attack on course books at all or anything like that, but they very, very often stick rigidly to using the course book and um, trying to, to bring as many materials into the classroom as possible. When there's a, I think there's a better way of doing it, a better way of teaching, and that's, and that's getting rid of these materials and breaking down the space in between you and the students and, and getting involved with what the students um, want to say. Um, and also, I think I think that the the the, the, the but teaching or teachers are, are actually under threat at the moment from from a variety of sources. Um, not only I think are they um, prevented from teaching properly because of books. Um, I think that that, that technology and, and things that are happening in the publishing world at the moment are going to have a big effect on teachers and that there is a huge amount of, 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 of new ways of, of people learning a language online and, and because of this and also this it's much cheaper so students are, are not so much coming into the classroom anymore they feel like they perhaps don't need the teacher because everything that they need to learn online uh, learn a language is online now and I think that's perhaps threatening our, our position so I think if, if a teacher can experiment and push boundaries and try to uh, really kind of expand what they can do in the classroom this is going to be a much more appealing for students and, and, and students are going to think twice about going online to try to learn a, a language they're going to say actually hold on uh, you know I've got this great teacher and, and he does these really cool things in class and he lets me speak and and, and all of these kind of things and, and I, I think that's very important for teachers to think about um, that we really need to um, uh, we really need to expand on uh, the things that we do in class because um, we are a little bit under threat and, and people need to know uh, need to know about that but I'm going off on a, a little bit of a tangent there um, so I apologize but so the main idea of the project just to get back to it is is about experimentation and to give people an experience in blogging itself um, so I'm just going to, 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 to summarize on some of the, the main points that I've covered in, in this talk uh, and so just to go back to the very beginning when if you're thinking about blogging um, do your research uh, look into other blogs, do lots of reading, um, and just take your time when you're developing it. Make it your own, uh, and that leads into the next point, which is personalization. If you're going to put, um, if you want people to come and see your blog, make it memorable for them. Um, otherwise, they're just going to leave it, and, and they'll forget about it, and, and it will just be lost, kind of in cyberspace somewhere. Um, Develop your own writing style. Uh, again, linked to personalization, I think. Um, this is, I think this is really important, that, um, that you write in a way that is comfortable for you. Try, don't try to be somebody that you're not, because um, uh, I think that you will either be found out or it just won't be an enjoyable experience for you uh, when you're writing um, the blog. Uh, and again, this um, if you're if you're writing about teaching for teachers, make it accessible. Make it in, in a style and a language um, so that those teachers can engage with what you're saying, so that they can also enjoy uh, your writing. Um, 
and then um, developing a PLN. Just it's just I think a, a very good way of developing a PLN. Um, I mean, I talked about a lot of things earlier, but reading other people's blogs and commenting on their on their blogs is a very good way of build, building up your PLN. Uh, if you get yourself known within that particular community, um, people res will respond to what you're saying, and you can build up these dialogues. And um, from from these these dialogues, ideas spring up, and 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 I think that's a very good way of developing a PLN, uh, building um, relationships this way. Um, if you're going to have a blog, you need to tell people about it. There doesn't seem to be, for me, if, if you're going, uh, you know, having a blog can be hard work. That's that's true. There's there's no there's no other way about it. It, it requires a lot of hard work. Um, so if you're going to put all of this work into this blog, why not tell people about it? I mean, I, I'm British. I'm particularly, you know, I, I'm reserved. It, it's just it's it's it, it, it's in my makeup, but. I'm not afraid to go onto Twitter uh, or onto Facebook and tell people that I, I have, have, have just, you know, posted uh, uh, on the blog and, and I'd like them to come and read it and I'd also like them to to, to retweet it or reblog uh, what I've done. Uh, so so if you have this great idea or, or you've, you've just written this, uh, this, this 2,000 word blog which you think is perhaps going to have an effect on somebody, then go out and tell people that that you've done that. There's no point having this this great idea sat there without um, without other people seeing it. So don't be afraid to do that. Uh, that's very important. I think Twitter and your PLN really come together and and, um, and work on uh, this, and they help with this particular point. Um, and I was saying there that the having a blog is hard work, and it can sometimes feel like it's, it's this huge weight on your shoulders, and that once you get a blog up and running, there's this huge pressure to to keep running with it, to, to keep posting, uh, and uh, you know to keep commenting and, and so on. And this can really take its toll. And I don't think I think some people fall into the trap of of writing for writing's sake. And this is something that I would I would try to get people to avoid. Um, if if you if you're running out of ideas or, or, or life is just getting in the way, then just step away from the blog for a while. Um, it just put it to one side and forget about it. The, the, a lot of people worry that the, the audience they built up, or, 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 or if that's what you want to call it, um, are going to desert you. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. Um, only only write when you really have something that you want to say and you want to share with other people. Um, that, that's something that I, I would really, really try to um, try to to hit home. Um, and the last point is self-explanatory. You really must enjoy the process of blogging. Um, it, it is enjoyable. It's a lot of work, like I said before, but it really is enjoyable. You know, seeing that people are coming to your site to to, to read what you say uh, is a huge boost. Um, and the, the enjoyment that I get out of writing um, about something that's happened to me, good or bad, um, it, it doesn't matter. This is, this is a, a really enjoyable experience. And I think the moment that <clears throat> the moment you stop enjoying writing or you, the moment that you stop enjoying the blogging process is perhaps the time that you need to step away from it and... Um, and maybe think about putting that um, that blog to one side and leaving it and going a different direction, or just you know giving yourself a break from it. Um, so I guess that kind of brings me to the the end of my talk. Um, um, these are my details. So uh, these are the two links to to my blogs. The top one is is my is the new blog. Um, and the bottom one there is, is I was going to say my old blog. It's still running. It's still there, and I'm still I'm still trying to to blog with that. And and you can also contact me on Twitter. Um, so 
That's about it, really. Um, if you if you if you if you're interested in the project itself and and, and learning about um, teaching unplugged, then then by all means um, uh, go to go to the blog and, and have a look, and it'd be really interesting. It'd be really nice um, uh, to try and get as many people on board as possible. Um, and I, I guess that's it, really. Uh, I'm not sure what to do next. I maybe uh, if people have questions, they can uh, write them in the in the box. But if not. Um, I guess I'm here. So I'll actually, uh, I'm going to say very quickly um, thank you to to Sylvia for her support before, uh, especially this week when I was worrying about things. Um, a, a big thank you to Shelley for inviting me and um, allowing me to come and talk on this, what I think is a fantastic um, uh, conference, uh, and everyone else involved. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Adam. Thank you for presenting. And um, you have inspired all of us. Um, Tom, I see that the link is not working. If um, you're invited to join the link that Tom will be adding in a second, um, and uh, we can continue the discussions. If there are any questions or comments, um, from anyone in the chat, feel free to um, add that. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, Adam and everyone, if you could um, click on that and join the discussions, uh, perhaps share your blog because we can't really uh, click on the whiteboard. It's not clickable. So uh, okay. if you could add the links there. And um, your PowerPoint presentation is actually in something called the courseware. So you'll be able to go into the courseware and um, view. You can actually download because it's public. I hope that's okay. Um, take a look at Adam's um, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, okay. There's a question Thank there by much. Shelley. I don't know why she's not using her mic the question or would you say that no to all teach should all teach no not all teachers should I'm blog. sorry Nelly I okay. didn't want to interrupt you uh, sorry okay uh, can you hear me yeah we can hear yeah. you I was gonna ask you uh, Adam because you were saying about your uh, about teachers and that um, about the writing process but uh, do you think that every a lot of people say that every single teacher should blog um, sort of as like reflective practice and I know that you said though that you should you know write when you want and it should be a process so so what do you feel about that um, I think that uh, I think every teacher should um, reflect on what they um, in, I'm not sure about blogging I, mean, I, I I'm not you know, we're trying to encourage people to blog here. So yes, if if you feel like um, the blogging and, and getting on on onto the internet to blog, then then yes, definitely do it. Um, but I think the most important thing is is reflection, and and you don't actually have to have a blog to reflect. Um, lots of of people. Uh, uh, the idea I'm, I'm thinking of here is from Dale Coulter, who's a, who's another teacher, and, and who you know, Shelley. Who he, he talked about the teacher just simply keeping a diary uh, of reflection, uh, and and this diary is at hand so that when you finished a lesson, uh, you immediately write something about that that particular lesson and how you felt and stuff like this. Um, and I, I think that the reflection is is the most important thing. Um, if 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 you can blog and you can set up a blog and write about your teaching, then yes, by all means, I would encourage every teacher to do that. But, but not everybody can do that or wants to do that. But I would certainly, if you're going to take anything away from this, is that you, you should reflect on your teaching. And, and that you don't have to share that with people. It can just be something for you to look back on um, and, and read. Or, or if you want to record yourself talking, then by all means. But, but reflection is probably the most important thing. Okay, thank you. That was a good answer. And thank you for being here. I really appreciate uh, I got to see Adam's uh, presentation at a couple. And uh, part of that 
was really wonderful. Uh, it's ten times more. A lot of people in the chat, you probably didn't follow along, but uh, were saying how uh, much, how passionate and, and how they really enjoyed what you were saying. Um, and but part of the other part of it was that I got to see his DOS, uh, Emily, and she was a really in inspiring part of that aspect too because she was so supportive and I, I think that that's what makes a great teacher as well is that they have that kind of support um, to allow um, and, and even support this kind of experimentation. So I love that you're one of the teachers that goes out there and actually takes this on and experiments. So I'm excited to see this new blog does. <laughs> Uh, me too. So thank you yeah. for being here. Okay, thank you for inviting me. It's good to hear your voice again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye, everyone.